I saw that made a, an impression on me was um, Pretty Woman. So I probably know most of Julia's lines in that movie. Um, I probably saw when I was seven, which is really inappropriate. I had played a swallow in The Prince and the Swallow. I played an angry cook in Alice in Wonderland. I played a witch in Arthur the Early Years. That was my like whole acting career before I, I got the role as Hermione in Harry Potter, so. I was nine. I loved learning my lines. I was completely obsessive and I would do it over and over and over again. Funnily enough, in the first Harry Potter film, if you watch carefully in some scenes, you can see me mouthing Harry and Ron's lines, as well as my own, because that's just what I was like. I was, I was crazy. I ended up doing eight auditions to get my role. I auditioned with maybe three or four different sets of Harrys. I would just literally like sit by the telephone and wait to get a phone call and sometimes it would be we like it would be weeks. I learned my lesson then that like if you're waiting for something to come it never it, like it never comes. The phone call always came when I was out of the house. Always. And they called me into the producer David Heyman's very like pristine white office. He said, um, we just wanted to tell you that you are the preferred candidate mm. for the role of Hermione. And I remember thinking, what does preferred candidate mean? Within about half an hour, they'd taken a photograph of Dan, Rupert and I, which was then broadcast on the internet oh of the three of us had been cast. We moved straight into a hotel. There were press outside a house. It was like this crazy whirlwind, like mm -hmm. something from a movie. Whether I'd been cast as Hermione or not, I, I've always, I was always a very serious child. I remember being like 13 and girls being like, Felicity is gonna kiss Ben on the school fields. It's amazing I had any friends because <laughs> I, I was, I just remember saying, well, that's stupid. It's too young to mean anything. He doesn't love her. And that's just a waste of time, you know, like drinking or being sexy mm -hmm. or smoking. It never really held any uh, allure oh, or excitement for me. I wanted to wear a sports bra up until I was like 22. I couldn't care less. So I guess I've just never been in a terrible rush uh -huh. to, to, to grow up or uh -huh. be seen as a, as a woman all of a uh -huh. sudden. Bling Ring is the first role when, you know, gosh, Nikki is, is so different to me. How do I try and understand mm -hmm. a young woman who loves these like things so much that she's prepared to, to commit crimes in order to to have them, trying to make sure that Nikki wasn't like a parody right. was, my, was my biggest challenge. The costumes were amazing. The low cut, juicy couture, yeah. and the skin tight dresses, I would say is the costume. I'm like, oh, we, we can see a bra strap here. We need to do something about this. She's like, no, sweetie. Nikki's all the bra, the bra strap showing. I'm like, right, okay, different mindset, okay. What did I keep? I don't know. Things that I feel like will be the most iconic mm -hmm. of Nikki will be her tramp stamp. Mm -hmm. And I can't really, I can't really keep the tramp stamp. It was a lotus flower, uh. um, kind of like a Buddhist like symbol, just above her butt crack. It was great, oh, really classy. Yeah. I think when, I, when it finally started to hit home that I was really famous, I sort of lived in denial for as long as I possibly could telling myself, oh, I'm like famous for like two weeks of the year mm -hmm. when the Harry Potter movie comes out and then everyone forgets about who I am. Up until the age of 18, I would take the Oxford Tube, which is a, which is a public bus mm -hmm. up and down from London. I got to the point where the fact that I was on the bus would spread from one end to the other and like it would just start to get totally crazy. And I'd be like, why, why am I doing this to myself? It probably wasn't advisable to go to college and room with a complete stranger who I had no idea who they were or like, you know, and, and to share a bathroom with like eight other people. That was my rebellion in a funny way, was my insistence to be normal and do normal things. Every day was a new day and I just had to see how it went.